If you had any problems, any sores or any lesions on your lips, on your tongue, on your, in your mouth at all. Now we will look at the mouth and throat. Ask the patient if he has had any recent sores on his lips, tongue or in the mouth. If yes, ask him to describe them and tell you how often they occur, how long they last, and if any treatment was used and the degree of effectiveness. Is his throat sore, or does he have any history of sore throats or problems with hoarseness? Ask about toothaches and problems with bleeding gums. Ask when he last saw his dentist and what dental work he's had done in the past year. Does he have a dental bridge or false teeth? Does he have any difficulty with chewing or swallowing, or any recent alteration in his sense of taste? Finally, ask about the use of chewing tobacco or snuff, both of which are implicated in oral cancer. These are pink, they're moist, they're intact, there's no lesions, there are no sores, there's no cracking. The skin around your mouth is moist and that is very, very good. Okay. Begin by visually assessing the mouth. The lips should be smooth, moist, and free of cracking, peeling, or lesions. Use a tongue blade to gently retract the lips so you can see the gums, which should be pink, moist, and lie firmly against the top of the teeth. It is normal for people of African heritage to have a dark line at the gingival margin. Inspect the teeth. Note any missing or broken teeth abnormal spacing or position. Are any teeth loose? When the teeth are closed, do they line up appropriately? Or is there an obvious underbite, overbite, or crowding? Are the chewing surfaces of the molars abnormally worn down? This can be caused by teeth grinding during sleep or times of stress, or may be related to poor enamel strength. The breath odor can provide significant clues to the overall health status. Is it clean or foul-smelling? Patients with undiagnosed or poorly controlled diabetes may have a fruity breath odor, signifying the presence of ketoacidosis. Poor oral hygiene commonly causes halitosis, or bad breath, due to the release of sulfurous compounds by a heavy growth of oral bacteria. It is also an indicator of the individual's level of self-care. A fishy or ammonia-like odor may indicate chronic renal failure, and an odor of feces on the breath may be a sign of recent vomiting or bowel obstruction. Abscess, gum infection, and high intake of vitamin supplements are other common causes of breath odor. Ask the patient to open his mouth wide so you can view the tongue. It should be pink in color, moist, and free of lesions or heavy coating. Small surface bumps called papillae give the tongue surface a roughened appearance. Ask him to raise his tongue inside an open mouth so you can observe the underside. The undersurface is normally smooth and glistening and the veins are clearly visible. Also, observe for excessive swallowing and drooling, both of which can indicate oral infection or injury or drainage from congested sinuses. Excessive drooling with or without cough is seen in patients with swallowing difficulties called dysphagia. Inspect the inside of the mouth and the margins of the tongue for any signs of lesions. These can be related to a variety of causes, but the biggest concern is early detection of oral cancer. Using a tongue blade to gently lift the cheeks away from the teeth Inspect first one side of the buccal cavity, then the other. Cancer lesions are often seen as white patches. Any that are noted should be palpated to see if they are flat or indurated. Inspect the entire oral cavity, giving particular attention to the edges of the tongue and the entire floor of the mouth underneath the tongue. 